So we know what tokens are now, but we don't really know why they differ between model providers. To understand this, we need to know how these vocabularies even get built and why different model providers do them differently. Here's the process for how tokenizers get trained. Let's imagine you've got a corpus of text here. We're going to use an extremely small corpus, just the single line, the cat sat on the mat. But in reality, this would be gigabytes, terabytes of data. The same data, in fact, usually that the model itself is trained on. Now we can build an extremely simple tokenizer just from this one sentence. We can take this piece of text and extract out the unique characters in it. It's probably simpler to look at this in code. I've created a character level tokenizer that takes in a data set and returns a tokenizer. And yes, it's in a class. TypeScript classes are good, folks. I've been saying this for a while. We'll get to this implementation in a minute, but let's actually look at the usage. We have our data set of the cat sat on the mat. Again, in a real application, this might be gigabytes of text. Then we grab our tokenizer by instantiating a character level tokenizer and I'm passing in an input of cat sat mat. We're then encoding the input turning it into tokens and logging out some information about the tokens. When we run this we can see that the input length the number of characters in cat sat mat is 11. And then the number of tokens that we produce at the end is also 11. This is because we only have characters as tokens. If we remove all these logs and just log something called tokenizer.mapping we can see our entire vocabulary of tokens and we can see there are only 10 tokens in the entire vocabulary. And this is not good because the more tokens we have in the input, the more work it's going to be for our LLM to process them. 